Hello, everybody. This is the lesson for Tuesday, February 23rd. Everybody has one of these sheets. I made sure the A Day kids got one yesterday when they were in class so that everybody can do this together with me today. And it isn't life or death, but I'd recommend you have a blue, light blue or dark blue, doesn't matter. You can use a pen too. And what I'd like you to do just quickly, neatly, is shade in these three circles. They're not really circles, they're spheres, okay? They're beads. This is a bead of water. If you shade it in, it'll look 3D, make it darker on the edges. You don't have to, just make it blue. That little one there. All right, you're like, okay, Fiscus, why'd we do that? Okay, I'm gonna use my regular pen here now. All the world's water. This is from research. Um, how long ago? Almost four years ago. Okay. This is new research. A team of people worked on calculating how much water was in the world. All of the water. And I mean all the water. The water inside of your body. In all the bodies in the world. The water in the air. The water in the ground. The water in the sky. The water in the lakes, rivers, mud puddles, swamps, oceans, cows, all the water, all the water in the plants, and the fish, all the water. If you could collect it in one place, in one bead, that's how much water there would be on the planet. That, and people are like, really? That's all? Yeah, the world's oceans aren't very deep compared to the size of the world. Okay, and I told everybody yesterday to make sure they had a blue. You don't have to have a brown. I'm just going to do this while I yak at you. I'm going to outline the world in brown. You usually see it in blue. I'm, what this is representing is you've collected all the water. Now the world is all dried up except for the water there. It's all been beaded up into one bead. So here's the world. I'm just doing a brown outline. I'm not going to color anything else in. Okay. Think about all that water. The water in your lungs. The water in your stomach. The water in your dog. The water in the fridge. The water in your breath. The water in your toothpaste. The water in your shampoo. All the water. Okay. All of it. Now, you're like, okay, well, how big, a, how big a thing is that? Tell yourself, you can use a pen or pencil for this. The size of that bead is 860 miles. Diameter, that means all the way across, okay? And tell yourself, this is all water okay now this smaller bead is just lakes rivers swamps and groundwater okay so this is how big is it 169 and a half okay so tell yourself, we're going to give yourself some more room to write, do it out here. 169.5 miles diameter. And that is lakes, all the lakes in the world, all the rivers in the world, all the swamps and groundwater.
Okay. Now, what about that little tiny guy? It's not so small you can barely get any color in it. That's just rivers and lakes. So, you know, Minnesota prides itself on its 10,000 lakes. Okay. So that is 34.9 miles diameter. I'm going to separate these. I'm going to do... Okay, that is just rivers and lakes. Okay, all the rivers and lakes in the world. The Great Lakes. Okay. All that water, those, those are Great Lakes. Okay. Hopefully your brain is going like, whoa. All right, next thing. So there's two basic, basic categories of water on the planet. Salt water and fresh water. Okay. Some of you have been to the ocean. Most of you haven't. So down here we got all kinds of room. What I'd like you to do is we're going to use just use the margin line here and write salt and fresh. Okay. Ninety-seven percent of that bead, ninety-seven percent is salt water. So what's left? Well, 3%. Okay. Now, what we care about is the fresh water. That's what we're going to spend most of our time talking about. Okay. Yes, the oceans are important, but in the time we have, we're going to spend most of our time talking about fresh water. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to break down this 3% and look at where that water is. Okay. It's in different kinds of places. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this with a like a brackety thing there. And I'm going to give you several different classes. All right. And you have to have this written down for a note check. Okay, here we go. Ice caps and glaciers. So this would be like North Pole, South Pole, and the tops of mountains, ice caps and glaciers. Of the 3%, okay, this is 68.7%. Now, you're like, what? Okay, in other words, that's about two thirds, okay? When you do math, two thirds is 67%. So, Two thirds, a little bit over, a little bit over two thirds of this three percent is in ice caps and glaciers. In other words, two thirds of three percent is about two percent. Does that make sense? So the world's water is 97 percent salt water, mostly oceans, and then two percent is ice caps and glaciers. That means the rest of the stuff we're going to write down is the other one percent. Because 97% plus 2% is 99%. We're going to worry about all the rest of our writing is the tiny 1% that's left. All right. Groundwater. That's what Albert Lee kids use when you turn on the faucet. When you wash, brush, and flush, that's we're using groundwater. Okay. The wells that are near the water towers. And that's 30.1%. Okay, make sure you get the decimals in there. I'll be able to ask you quiz questions like which one of these has more water, okay? So this is gonna be in order. The numbers are gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. So this was most of that 1%, the biggest chunk of the 1% that's left, okay? Now, lakes, all the world's lakes have 0.26%, point two six percent that's a little over a quarter of one percent okay 
All right. Now, this is one you don't usually think about, but we have it around here. Now, the ground is frozen. If you try to dig a hole in your yard right now, good luck. It's pretty hard. Ground ice. If you ever heard of permafrost up in Alaska, this is water in the ground that's frozen in the, in the soil. Ground ice. The, that is 0 0.022. 22 thousandths of 1%. Make sure you get the decimals right. Okay, soil moisture. This is mostly, you know, rainwater that's in the ground. The ground is, is the soil is damp. It's not dusty dry. Soil moisture, 0 0.001. One thousandth of 1%. The atmosphere. When it's cold out and you can see people breathing out, you see the, the moisture coming out with each breath and it condenses and makes a little cloud. That's, that's moisture in the atmosphere. That's also 0 0.001. So these two are tied. And this is the, all the water in the clouds. Okay. Right. Next. Swamps. All the swamps in the world. Point zero 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 eight percent. That's eight ten thousandths of one percent. <laughs> We're getting kind of small here. Rivers. And you think, man, there's got to be a lot of water there. Not compared to this. Okay. Point zero 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 two percent. In other words. There's four times more water in swamps than there is in rivers. And the last one, you're like, oh, thank goodness. The last one. Biological. What does that mean? Life. The stuff inside of garter snakes. The stuff inside of your dog. Stuff inside of you. Okay. The water in your hair. Okay. Point in everybody's hair. Point zero 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 one percent, one ten thousandth of one percent. All right. If you add all those up, and trust me, I've done it. These numbers here should add up to a hundred. Well, there's some rounding error, so this comes out to ninety nine point. 0.851%. We came pretty close, okay? That's a 5-1. That's a lot of number crunching, okay? And we're going to spend time talking about most of most of this unit is going to be talking about stuff in here, okay? Once we're done with the water unit, we're going to go to the weather unit and we'll be talking right about here, okay? All the water and the storm clouds and that kind of stuff and hurricanes. All right, I'm already at 13 and a half minutes and I'm um, gonna wrap this up pretty soon. Um, for the fun of it, I'd recommend looking up how much pee is in your pool. You don't have to watch it, but you'll find it interesting and disgusting. Okay, so I'm gonna leave you with that because. The people that are in class day, the B-Day kids, are going to get tortured with something that the A-Day kids don't have to do. So there you go. I'm going to end this up now because the B-Day kids are going to take more time than the A-Day kids. Make sure you have this done and ready to show me that you did it. Okay? I'm going to zoom in. Let me see. Oops. Okay. Yeah, the, the writing up here too. I don't even know if I showed this. This is there's the three beads. All right, basically fifteen minutes. <laughs>